Good evening, everyone. My name is Christine Wycliffe, and I teach first grade at Oak Brook Elementary School, home of the Dolphins. Tonight, it is my honor to present to you Mackenzie Johnson, who will be presenting to you how she makes sense of um, solving a math problem. By the end of her presentation, you will have no doubt that Mackenzie really, really knows her math. Um, also, we will have Adam Cook. He will be presenting to you how he reads a variety of literature and informational text and how he shares his knowledge through writing and speaking using a variety of digital tools and visual and performing arts. Please enjoy splashing in the white and deep ocean of California Common Core Standards with my two dolphin prouds. Good evening. My name is Mackenzie Johnson. I would like to share with you how I use my brain to solve a math problem. Every day we have a problem of the day. Here's an example. Mm so mm dolphins. Mm so mm dolphins. How many dolphins did they see in all? First, I read the problem to figure out the missing information. I know that I will need to fill in the blanks with two names and two numbers. Currently, we are working on two-digit numbers. Here's the problem again after I filled in the blanks. Mackenzie saw 24 dolphins. Adam saw 18 dolphins. How many dolphins did they see in all? Now I read the question one more time to make sure that I understand what the problem is asking. And I circle the question so I know how to word my solution. The question here is how many dolphins did they see in all? G using the words in the question, I write out my solution sentence. They saw mm, dolphins in all. Next, I draw the proof using tens and ones. Since the numbers are two-digit numbers, I draw two tens and four ones for my 24 dolphins, and one ten and eight ones for Adam's 18 dolphins. Since the question is asking to find out how many in all, now that... I need to add looking at my ones I notice that I have 12 ones which means I have to regroup so I regroup 10 ones into one ten, and I have two ones left now I now have four tens and two ones, which means which makes forty two in all. <coughs> then I double 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 check. My proof by writing an equation. I now, I know I saw twenty four, and Adam saw eighteen. So I write twenty four plus eighteen equals forty two. All right. Finally, I now I know. I know the sum of 24 and 18 is 42. Therefore, the solution is they saw 42 dolphins in all.
Every day we explain how we get to the solution to our partners or teacher, but once a week we will write down each step. Here's a sample of my written explanation. Thank you for your time, and here's my dolphin plan, Adam. Wow, very good. I just want to make a comment. Uh, remember, this is first grade. Right. Right. And this is, and if you heard some of that academic vocabulary, you heard things like um, explanation, my solution, the sum. And um, we just want to congratulate. That is a fine example. Thank you for sharing that, Mackenzie. Good evening, my name is Adam Cook and I would like to share with you how I use my brain to come to become a fluent reader and writer. We, were, we read a story called The Kite from our treasure book. This is a fictional story. We retell the beginning, middle, and end of the story in many different ways. This time, we were asked to retell the story in order by performing tableau in groups. Tableau is a frozen scene from a story. Beginning of the story, Frog and Toad are trying to fly the kite without success in the meadow. You can see the students pretending to be the grass blowing in the meadow. The Frog and Toad are flying the kite and the toad is sad with his head down because the kite will not fly. Middle of the story, the birds are making fun of the frog and toad because they, they couldn't fly their kite. You can see the students imitating the birds who are teasing the frog and toad by pointing their fingers and sticking out their tongues. <laughs> End of the story. Frog and toad never give up were persistent until the end. They were f the kite finally flew high in the sky, even higher than the birds. You can see that the two students are pretending to be the flying the kite and the three birds are making f are not able to fly higher than the kite you can see three girls who are playing with you know playing the birds are sad and probably regretting and they were making fun of the frog and toad. They hopefully learned a lesson to be kind and helpful to others. Then when others are struggling with a problem. We were, we also read a fiction, non-fictional story called Meet Ben Franken from our treasure book. This story is a biography. Also, we read other, another version of Ben Franken from our iPad app called Reading Rainbow. After getting information from both versions of stories, we rewrote the story pretending to be Ben Franklin. We used our Chromebooks to create a Google document in Google Drive we, to type a, up our story. Also, we made little cutout puppets from young Ben Franklin and older Ben Franklin. After that I was able to retell to 
my class who Ben Flanken was. My as my teacher videotaped me. He, here is the clips. Enjoy. I am Benjamin Franken. I was born in 1706 in Boston, Massachusetts. I have 16 siblings. I have 10. I am the 10th. I'm the 10th in my family. I love to, to read, but I don't love math. I love telling jokes and playing games. I am very curious about wind and electricity. I invented hand pedals. My dad wa wanted me to be a minister and he needed help at his candle shop. Now I'm older than Ben Franklin. I invented the stove that keeps people warm. I invented glasses that helps people see better. I invented the lightning rod that keeps people's house safe from catching on fire. I discovered electricity using my kite and my key. I got married and had three three children. I became a heel by help Oh, that was it? Oh, awesome. Again, I want to commend uh, Mr. Young Cook on his fantastic vocabulary using words such as fluent and fictional and imitating and persistent in biography. And these are our first graders. Um, Where are parents and grandparents? Where are you? I know you're proud. Please stand. We want to see you. Yeah, we want to see you. Thank you for, for supporting our young people the way that you do.